In this chapter, we look at project execution and commissioning, where the bulk of the modifications to the original project plan are made. Here's a diagram of the tasks to be undertaken at the different stages of the project. The first step in the commissioning process is the creation of a commissioning checklist. Total plant production against forecasts, as well as the production of individual modules and the production of the inverter, are each extremely important. The main aim of the plant production check is to maximise the productive capacity of the solar plant and this should be repeated every two years or depending on the size of the facility it might be done more frequently. You can check the plant's production performance from the instant response to the solar temperature and the radiance. You can evaluate the plant's output using the meter and then check performance against the global and direct irradiance and against the performance of a calibrated cell. It's important to use a calibrated cell of the same technology type as the panels if the measurement is to be meaningful. In this slide you can see the main elements in the plant production check. On the left is a meteorological station providing temperature and irradiance data. The meter will provide you with a measure of the energy injected into the grid. The question is, is the plant producing power within its optimum range? If production is outside that optimum range, you can adjust the inverters or perhaps check the different rows of panels to improve this performance. A communication port on the meter will enable continuous monitoring of power production. In this slide, you can find a suggested schedule for plant production checks. Measure every 10 minutes for at least five consecutive days from dawn to dusk. That bank of data can be compared to the expected measures from the solar radiation maps or from the data from the meteorological station. Next, the electrical characteristics of the PV generator should be checked against data for standard metering conditions. That's where the irradiance is one kilowatt per meter squared at a temperature, uh, cell temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. By comparing the actual curve from the generator to the curve from that standard model, the performance of the PV generator can be established. Nowadays, there's a lot of equipment that can help you to obtain this curve and to move it into standard conditions. This test has to be done two hours before and after local midday. Before the test is carried out, the global irradiance has to be at least 700 watts per meter squared. Finally, test the electrical characteristics of the inverter. This is the second most important element in a PV facility and the objective of the test should be to determine the characteristics that define the performance of the inverter. The most important characteristics of an inverter are its efficiency and its maximum power point tracking. There are two measures of the efficiency of an inverter. There is an efficiency defined by the inverter manufacturer but also the inverter's European efficiency, which is dependent on the inverter's load on the DC side. It's very important to verify that the inverter is working at its maximum power point, as this sets the maximum production from the modules in the PV facility.